out Villanova and St. John's Big East Women's Basketball presented by SoFi. It's coming up. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. For St. John's and Villanova tonight on the Big East Digital Network. Red Storm starting lineup as they come in 13 and 7, 6 and 3 in the Big East. A homecoming for the Philadelphia native Alicia Kaby. Played her high school basketball at Newman Garetti and of course Quadasha Hoppy, the fourth leading scorer currently at Big East play, third in conference games. And it was Tiana England who had the big game the first time around that these two teams met. For the Villanova Wildcats. Uh, Sean St. Jock mentioned it. It's been pretty much the Maddie and Mary show. Madison Segrist, Mary Gadeka. And if one of them's not hitting, have to somehow try and find a third option. Villain over the white, and St. John's the red. We're underway in what's the 69th meeting between these two. Mentioned it at the top, Matt. It's always tight when these two teams come together. It's going to be interesting to see how the Maddie and Mary show starts off here. They try to hook up there. A great job back door, cutting that pass away. I believe that was Alston, and here come the Johnnies. Alston with a quick elbow pull, and wasting no time, picking up right where she left off, which was Sunday in the win at Seton Hall. 15 points that afternoon has the Johnnies on the board. Boy, we mentioned her at the top for a reason, Matt. I mean, just the confidence she's showing right off the bat there in transition pulling up and knocking down the jumper after a great defensive stop on the back door, and here they come again. Looking for Segrist again, second turnover. England leading Alston, nearly got the layup. She'll go to the line. Boy, that's what St. John's wants to do. They want to mess with what Villanova's trying to do offensively. And right off the bat, you know, Gadeka and Segrist having trouble hooking up, trying to get inside the paint. And Joe Tartamel, of course, seen there his eighth season. We talked to him earlier this week, Matt, and it just seemed like he was you know, confident with where his team is at. Three straight wins. and. The way they've been playing, I mean, it's been a little inconsistent in conference play. Obviously, the losing streak before they got on this nice run. But when your guards are playing well, when the confidence is kind of flowing, and players like Alston, who are really starting to click offensively, you got to feel confident, even coming on the road, a place where historically St. John's has struggled. One of two for Alston, who came in at 79%. We talked about the senior light going on down the stretch. It certainly happened for her. Seven straight double-figure games coming in. And friendly bounce for Gadeka. And able to knock this game up on her 21st three of the year. Not the best shooter from the outside, but certainly feeling pretty confident at home. And an air ball from Hoppy and right back to the Cats. That's what the role players for Villanova are so good at. Doing the dirty work down low. Herlihy with a strong rebound after an ill-advised shot in the corner from Hoppy. Minute and a half gone by, they set up Cameron Onkin. It's only a 15% three-point shooter. England out of the pack with the rebound. Go, 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 
Good bounce game in Alston. You can see, feels like she has an advantage to the cup and the foul on Raven James. Another aggressive drive bat, like you said, to the 10. And look at Harry Perrette. I mean, what a career he's had. It's his last go round in the Big East. And been lucky enough to have his team a couple of times, Matt, this year. And you know, at times he's still kind of figuring it out with the way certain pieces are moving. And you know, obviously Onkin had a nice three-point opportunity. He'd love for the role players to start knocking down some shots. Third and fourth attempts coming for Alston, who's done all the scoring so far for St. John's. 16-point win for Joe Tartamella's kids. Ended up with 38 points in the paint at Seton Hall. And picked up their first win at Walsh Gym in the last four years. Yeah. Never a tough, never an easy place, I should say, to go, although to be fair, this year, I mean, the road has been not, not too kind to a lot of teams in this conference. Yeah, I was gonna say, you're pretty familiar with that. <laughs> nice penetrating pitch at the kick out. And Samantha Karanji with what's her 10th three of the year for the dead eye for the Wildcats. 42% shooter coming in. Seems like when there's a role player that steps up, she's the first one that kind of gets in gear for Villanova, knocks down a big shot there. Catch and shoot for Emma Nolan. And quickly one and done go the Johnnies. Yeah, that's not what St. John's is looking for offensively. Could have gotten maybe something inside there where they're looking to take advantage of Villanova, but that time Nova's defense forces a tough shot. Bounce game for Herlihy, trying to force the issue and grabbed out of the air by England. Tiana England had a big start the first time these two met, setting up Hoppy, who's on an offer to start, has missed her first couple attempts. That was a little bit more in rhythm, Matt, than her first shot where she kind of forced it. She, did, she was able to find some space, kind of got the defender to go away from her a little bit and then kind of forced it up the first time. That was a better shot, but a little off the target that time, Can, didn't quite get in rhythm. Nice backdoor bounce, Seacrest, everything but the finish. Lost her footing. And Alston again out of the pack. Gets it back from England and the backdoor cut for Drip. Well, I'll tell you what, Seacrest, so unlucky, just got caught in between our steps there on one end. And like you said, ton of Drip on that layup from Drip, really strong take on the backdoor cut, easy lay and doing what Seegers couldn't do at the other end. Halsted now with all six yeah. for St. John's early on. Well, feed the hot hand, right? Yeah, absolutely. Seegers got it stripped away. Good D by the Philly native KB. Shot clock down to three, nice step through for Herlihy. It's not something I've seen a whole lot from Hurley when I've had Villanova this year, Matt. That was impressive. That's really smooth and the way she was able to time that up and that's something that she's got in her locker when she's feeling and going right. I think we need to remember that uh, about Bridget Hurley. Is this a strong take from England that she is a player that, that you know, can potentially fill it up at times. She's had as many as 19 at a game before. Speaking of filling it up, Look at this Red Storm lineup. Three players in double figures. You have England right on the doorstep. And when your fourth player there on that list is arguably one of the best guards, not only in the Big East, but you look around the country, and she kind of fits in there as well. I mean, really impressive depth that Coach Joe Tartamella has at the backcourt position. But like you were saying with Hurley, it's been one of those things where she's been the first player to step up when it hasn't been Mary and Maddie. But, you know, at times when threes aren't falling for Villanova, they do kind of force it with Mary and Maddie a little bit more. Nice to see her get inside and make a nice move to get to the basket and finish it off. Shot clock cut in half. Leilani Correa, the talented freshman, newly in and drawing contact. Another look at it here, Matt, and used her space well. Definitely some contact on that right wrist going up with it at the elbow and two free throws upcoming for Correa. Leilani Correa. She and Maddie Segrist might as well just have all of the Big East Freshman of the Week awards. Well, the conference is in good hands with these two. There's no question about that as she knocks down a pair. I mean, it's so much fun, you know, as someone who's been around the Big East for, you know, going back to my, my school days. I mean, just on both ends, the men's and the women's, it seems like every year there's so many good young players that come through this conference and just shows you the health in this new expanded era of the Big East, how well each year the freshmen keep getting on both sides, really. And, with Segrist you know, leading the con one of the leaders in the conference in a number of categories, especially scoring the basketball, and obviously what St. John's has you know, for the future as well. It's really impressive, and it's already on display here this season and here tonight. Good cross-court find here for Herlihy. Karanji, one more pass, and Segrist with Bottoms. 
She could do it all, 51st of the year for a sub 41% shooter. Good for seventh in the Big East. Seems like when she knocks down the first one, it's gonna be a good night. It seems like that kinda has to get her going. The contested three was a tough shot. Knocks down a really tough three point jumper. Both teams have had leads. What else would you expect as KB drawing contact? As Villanova and St. John's going back and forth at the pavilion. Seacrest giving the Wildcats the lead. Big East basketball presented by SoFi. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Back at the Fitterit Pavilion, Big East Women's Basketball presented by SoFi. Villanova with a one-point lead on St. John's. On what's the final Friday here in January, the second matchup, Sean St. John, in a little less than the last four weeks, Nova needing the extra period. You said it, only overtime game in conference play. I mean, it just shows you not only the history, no, it seems like every time these two play, like we talked about earlier, it goes down to the wire, but it's only fitting that we've had one overtime game in Big East women's play so far this season, and it's these two. And it was a really tight game the first time these two met. It was that third quarter where Villanova thought that they kind of regained control in the game, but St. John's had that late run in the fourth. They were able to get it to overtime, and then Villanova made enough plays down the stretch, but they got a lot out of Maddie Segrist that night. They got a lot out of Mary Gadega. It's good to see early on Segrist being aggressive. I think St. John's have kind of limited her cuts to the basket so far, but knocked down a three-point shot early on. That's a really good sign for her making a shot early on. Not seen a lot yet from Mary Gadega, but some of the role players have shown some good stuff early on. Herlihy with a nice up and under to get to the basket, and we've seen Ankin not be afraid on offense as well. So Ari Paredes got to feel at least good about the way that his team has been flowing offensively at times. But what I've loved so far has been St. John's' guards. We talked about it during the break. It seems like every year Joe Tartamella's loaded at the backcourt. And once again, his guards are not afraid. They're getting to the bucket. They're getting to the free throw line. They're making things tough on Villanova early on. And when you've got that combination on the road, you're always going to be in games. And in the Big East where road wins are hard to come by, it's great to have great guards and kind of set the tempo for your offense. Out of the timeout. The Philly native KB who played her high school ball right down the road, Newman Goretti. And pushes this back to the St. John's lead. Something they didn't do, uh, quite frankly, enough of the first time these two teams met. Didn't press it till late. Able to force a turnover though. Villanova's given it away four times early on here in this first period. Good ball fake for England. Again, everything but the finish, and the tie-up will stay down at this end. Had Villanova Butler earlier this season, Matt, and Butler really used the press to an effective rate against Villanova, and St. John's kind of switching it up. They were playing a lot of man-to-man -to, -man to start things off, but they're starting to press Villanova a bit. It's a young team, you know, overall. You know, that's the thing that, that kind of gets lost, and with, you know, with Mary and Maddie, the way they're playing, a lot of young players on this team, talented players, but young nonetheless, and St. John's trying to take some advantage of that by quickening up their pace. Anglin, good find for Nolan, who's known for her three-point shooting. Forced that, and a little too much for Emma Nolan. Red Storm have started out three of nine. Villanova early on, four of its first seven. 
But the four Wildcat turnovers helping St. John's. Nice cut for Secret. Score the basket plus the foul. Well, you can't teach height, Matt. Huge height advantage for Secret. She rips through two defenders. Strong finish at the 10. That's what they've been trying to deny her from the first few minutes of this game. But Maddie Segris is at the line for the old fashioned tray. Well, yeah, just how reliant are they? 41 of the 52 on Sunday in that loss at Marquette. And ended up shooting sub 35% and they were significantly out rebounded, but still even had a lead, had a shot, but just had a tough fourth quarter. Back in front after a couple free throws for Segrist. So six early on for Maddie Segrist completing the three point play the old fashioned way and the Johnnies turn it over for the first time. Contact for Gadeka under the basket and a blocking foul. You mentioned Villanova, even, though, even in those games where they, they find a way to stay in it. You know, plays like Ankin just made are so crucial. Obviously, their blocking foul defender was inside the circle, but one of those kind of plays where you just kind of, you read the play, you read the defender, you pick off the pass, and you find a chance in transition. Gadeku hasn't had too many chances, yet gets to the free throw line. Hard to believe Mary Gadeka is in fact a senior at this point. From over the bridge in South Jersey, Mullica Hill. And of course, mom, Lisa Angelotti. Villanova basketball sensation in the top 10 at scoring. I think there might need to be an extended postseason for Mary to, to quite pass mom. But still knocking on the doorstep a little bit. Four point lead for the Wildcats. Largest they've enjoyed. Raven Farley, the LSU transfer, newly in, and just ends up getting it taken away. Turnover for the Red Storm. Now they're second. Segrist off the bounce game, setting up the mid-range. And KB able to clean it. Feeling it a little bit there. I think she felt like she was in a good groove. Took a bit of a tougher shot than she would like to in that position. Not really in the rhythm of the offense. Went a little iso there, but the confidence is there. No question about that. Nice feed down low, KB trying to force the issue over Gadeka, who stood her ground. It's, it's a little weird, Sean, pace-wise. This feels like it favors St. John's, but Villanova's got the early lead. Yeah, and, and defensively for, for Villanova, it seems like they've adapted to what's been going on. They're finding some chances down low, and boy, a little unfortunate. It looked like there, KB recovered well, but Segrist used her height advantage to get back to the free throw line. Alicia Kaby hit with the personal. Always seems to play well when she comes back to Philadelphia. 16 and a career high four steals at Villanova a year ago. But she'll get a seat on the bench. What's the third team foul on the Red Storm? Maddie Seegers, 73% from the line, 75 at conference games. St. John's now on what's an almost two and a half minute scoring drought. As this, uh, if you couldn't script a better start for Harry Paredes kids, minus the four turnovers. I know if we were to talk to Harry at the half, he'd say, well, you know, everything's going right. He'd say, except if, you know, we could stop turning the ball over. Interior defense, though, has been a huge plus. I mean, the guards have now started to find some bodies down low that have stopped them. And Gadeka defensively, as we always seem to see from hers, really stout down low. And here they go again. The Cats get another, force another turnover. Great job diving on the floor to get it by Onkin. And setting up Gadeka. That's the MO for Cameron Onkin. Not the, the best shooter from either the perimeter or inside, but will certainly give you those hustle plays. And nice setup on the block for Gadeka, drawing the foul. England. Onkin as well, Matt, I think take another look here. This is a great, just one-on-one. -on -one. Gadeka using, again, the size advantage to her benefit there. But I think of Onkin's play, you know, obviously forcing turnovers, but rebounding as well. It seems like she's always important when it comes to that fight on the glass as well. When she's doing that, it really helps Villanova get second chance opportunities or just, you know, kind of finish off some possessions and get the ball back. and. And try to find those two studs on offense, Gadeka and Segrist. A couple missed free throws for Gadeka. Brooke Mullen newly in for Villanova to give Segrist about a minute and a half breather. 
And the Johnnies give this right back on an ill-advised shot. And it's Hoppy again, Matt, third straight shot. It kind of feels like it hasn't been quite in the flow of the offense for St. John's. And another big reason, I think, why Villanova's got a little bit of a lead here. They've kind of kept Q quiet so far for the Johnnies, but it's because they've been making her take some tough shots so far. Matt Martucci, Sean St. John, winded down the first quarter here. In the rematch of these two, Villanova took the first one, needed overtime. Up in Jamaica, Queens. Second chance for the Cats after the Gadeka miss and another foul, which will put her back on the line, the 15th foul here in our opening period of play. Now, I mentioned it earlier, Matt. I mean, Onkin down low, again, just kind of going after the loose ball and it forces St. John's to have to regroup defensively and smart play to find Gadeka again, using her size to kind of get into the paint and, and find herself at the charity stripe. Harry Gadeka making good on what was a couple of misses. She and Segrist, as you might expect, have now combined for 14 of the 19. And Villanova continues to enjoy its largest lead on what's an 8-0 run here in almost the last three minutes. Correa in England perched on those wings. Too much for Correa on the three-point attempt. Shoots almost 40% from the outside. Always have to honor her. Again, man, it kind of felt like there wasn't a ton of ball movement there for St. John's. Didn't really get a whole lot done on that possession. And again, kind of felt like a settle for Joe Tartamella's team on the offensive end there. Shot clock inside 15 for the Wildcats. Karanji briefly doubled. Herlihy is capable of hitting that and takes a better shot for early for Bridget Herlihy. And Villanova opening this up. Up by nine are Harry Paredes' kids. Wow, what a great play by Hurley to open up the extra space, and she finds the, finds the space, knocks down a tough shot. Better ball movement this time for the Johnnies. Five seconds left. England wants it herself. Off the bounce with the left, and couldn't get it to go. End of one in an impressive first quarter for Harry Paredes, Villanova Wildcats. Almost 55% shooting. And what's a nine point lead? And Bridget Herlihy getting it done. An unlikely source, Big East Women's Basketball, presented by SoFi. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Back at Fitter and Pavilion, Villanova closing the first quarter on what was a 10-0 run and now a nine-point lead for Harry Paredes Wildcats. The Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep returns to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, March 6th to the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tournament now on sale starting at just $50. For tickets, visit BigEast.com slash WBB tickets. 
Yeah, Martucci, Sean St. Jacques. We talked to Harry Peretta on the phone this week. Said they were going to add a little bit of an extra wrinkle to their offense. Maybe it was the backdoor cut. He mentioned, you know, we see so many teams different times during the year. The more they see us, the more they're going to get used to what we like to do. Obviously, they like to shoot threes. They like to get open looks on the offensive end. Trying to go backdoor cuts, trying to get to the basket, trying to open up things inside the paint. It's worked out well. You know, Bridget Early, he's knocked down a couple of shots. And Maddie Segrist has found herself in some good positions to make things happen on the offensive end. And of course, a couple of turnovers for St. John's on the offensive end, although they give it right back to the Johnnies there. But, you know, great first quarter from Villanova. Again, I'm sure Harry Pratt is not 100% thrilled. We mentioned it earlier. You know, he's a bit of a perfectionist at times, but what a great finish defensively to the quarter. And like we mentioned earlier, just getting good shots and making St. John's have to really work for it when the guards are having a much tougher time of it than they had in the first half of the first quarter. Hoppy on the rise up, using the elbow. And the first time we've called Quadasha Hoppy's name in terms of getting into the scoring column. It comes the fifth member of the Red Storm to score. Early, he had the big first quarter and nearly tapped that rebound out to Mullen. England penetrating pitch. Not even a minute gone by just yet here in the second quarter. Matt Martucci, Sean St. Jock. Villanova looking for what would be a sixth conference win. St. John's trying to pick up a seventh. Good ball movement for the Johnnies. And Hoppy's three though dies on the right side of the rim. So a four of 15 start. Gets a big steal for Villanova. Fifth Red Storm turnover. Good look for Mullen. Unkin climbing the ladder and went down in a heap. I apologize for. My parents never taught me anything about. Technical difficulties with our production truck seem to be worked out. Matt Martucci, Sean St. Jacques. Tough break for Ankin there, Matt, going up for that rebound. Uh, not sure she had a place to land when she came back down. I think the Johnnies might have gotten a little fortunate there, but again, just shows you what Ankin does on both ends of the floor, those extra plays and never afraid. Unique Drake off the bench for the Johnnies. Just missed that three-point attempt. Rebound run down out of bounds. And we'll stay down at this end. Yeah, it's been a trademark for Harry Peretta's teams ever since he first came into this league. I mean, they just fight on every possession on both ends of the floor. And that's what can be the difference in these games. And we talked about the overtime meeting the first time. And stats will tell you that the Johnnies should have won that game, but Villanova made enough plays. Drake going to the basket and will get a couple of free throws. Right at the two minute mark here of the second quarter. It goes on Matty Segris, so it's already the second on Villanova's freshman sensation. And she's likely getting a breather for the rest of the half. It's, it's the move you have to make. Obviously, she's so important to what they do offensively, and that's why you gotta let her kind of sit out these last couple of minutes. You got a bit of a lead to work with, and you know, it's still a young player. And then Coach Harry Pratt is teaching her a little bit about what she should be doing in there and on that possession on the bench at the moment off camera, but it's one of those things where you need her late in the game, and it's the smart move for a young player, a young star like Segrist is to give her some time these last two minutes to regroup and hope your team can finish the first half strong. One of two for Unique Drake. Any type of production from her at conference play is good. Only averaging about a point a game. Shot clock cut in half for the Cats. Mullen nearly lost it and then threw it away anyway. Mullen hasn't been on the floor too long. I think it kind of showed there, Matt. You take a look here. Got lost, got trapped, three Johnnies around her and kind of tried to volleyball tap it out and didn't really have much of a chance there to keep that possession alive. Hoppy with a good find. KB hanging and able to get the bucket. Boy, I'll tell you what, Matt, that's a heck of a play. Heck of an athletic play right there to get to the bucket. And a little bit of showtime at the end there, whipping it around into the bucket off the glass. Six now with the Philadelphia homecoming to go with five rebounds for Alicia Kaby. A little 3-0 burst for the Johnnies. 
And what's an almost four minute Villanova scoring drought? Shot clock down to three, Gadeka and ends it. Big basket for Mary Gadeka. Now has 11 on the night. The 19th time she's been in double figures this year. 19 second differential between shot and game clock. Nova now goes with the zone. And Drake able to slide through it to set up KB, but they couldn't get the bucket. Shot clock off for Harry Peretta, the Cats. Hold for one. Kadeka knew how much time exactly there was on that last possession. Might as well maybe go back to her here if he can with 10 seconds. Yeah, smart basketball IQ to be able to set up the two for one. Five seconds. Kadeka again with Seacrest on the bench. And nearly had four in a row. But Villanova, an impressive what ends up being first 20 minutes. We'll go into the break with what's a seven point lead. We'll have stats, highlights, and plenty more coming here from Vinterit Pavilion. You're watching Big East Women's Basketball, presented by SoFi. You're watching Villanova Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Time here at the Fitterin Pavilion. It's Villanova up by seven on St. John's as we get the second half of Big East women's basketball started. Well, as the calendar turns to February, Big East teams across the conference will hold annual pink games to raise awareness for breast cancer and fund critical research. The Creighton men's basketball program kicked off the season of pink games in Omaha last weekend, holding an event that has become an Omaha tradition and quite the sight to behold. It's our 10th year doing the uh, Creighton vs. Cancer Pink Out. 
when we come together on a cause, uh, Creighton has shown and the city has shown that uh, they'll really rally around it. And uh, each year it's kind of taken on its own form and you know manifested itself into what it is today. And we're lucky to have the event. I think everyone has a, a unique first experience when they either come through the concourse or step out of the tunnel the first time you see it. It's really overwhelming. For me, uh, it's probably our stand up for uh, presentation we do. The arena goes dead silent. and. Uh, I don't think there's anybody that isn't impacted and that's probably the moment that re resonates with most. Everybody's either is celebrating a life in some respect today, whether it's someone that they've lost to this awful disease, someone that's beat it or someone that's currently going through it, uh, you're honoring someone. In my wildest dreams, I would have never guessed that the community and the media and everybody would have jumped on board with this like they have. When I'm done here someday, it'll be one of the, one of the proudest things I think that we've left behind. You're watching St. John's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Thirty to twenty-three, Villanova on top of St. John's Big East Women's Basketball, presented by SoFi. Matt Martucci and Sean St. John. As uh, this continues to be an impressive league, we talked about the the log jam and the standings. As uh, everybody looking up at DePaul, and no surprise, as we look at our players of the week, Lexi Held is right there again for the Blue Demons. Uh, one of the top scorers in this league for Doug Bruno's Blue Demons. How, how about the year that they're having, though? It seems like every year, right, Doug Bruno's got a heck of a squad that's going to be challenging nationally. You know, we're not just even talking about the Big East here. I mean, every year you're talking about DePaul is one of the best teams in the country, and 
Well, Lexi Heald is done again this season. I mean, is filling it up, and it seems like every game she plays, she's stuffing the stat sheet. And obviously the way Creighton's been playing as well, they have a ton of great players. Great to see them get some recognition there as well. And Kristen Spoliar, a week after being the Big East Player of the Week, ends up back on the honor roll. And of course, right here in our own game, Wadasha Hoppy, who's had a tough time getting herself going. Seems like she's been a little bit off the pace. I mean, it feels like there's been a couple possessions where she's rushed it a little bit. You know, they're not finding her in great spots, but also, you know, she's trying to force it at times as well from the perimeter and not getting the best shots. I mean, at times St. John's has settled quite a bit from three, and the other good, the, the, that, that's the bad news. The good news is, is that if she gets a couple of good looks in this second half, it can turn on a dime for St. John's. We saw it in the end of that second, or beginning of that second quarter. They really wiped out the deficit really quickly. With players like Hoppy, St. John's is not going to be going anywhere in this game. Well, no surprise there. Carta, Spingola, and Scott rounding out the Big East women's basketball honor roll. Talked about DePaul on what is now a 10-game win streak. 9-0 are the Blue Demons overall. Continue to, to climb in terms of their rankings. And then you see the log jam. Marquette, Butler, and St. John's trying to and separate itself, maybe get itself alone in second place after this, and Villanova in that third tier, so that you talked about it before. There's DePaul, the second tier, the third tier, and everybody else. You kind of feel like Villanova's holding on to St. John's coattails right now, trying to drag them right back down into this heap in the middle of that second through round seventh spot right now in the Big East. It's about as tight as it could possibly be, you know, with the exception, of course, of those fantastic to Paul Blue Demons, That's why this game is so important. There's still so much time left, obviously, in this conference season. But this always, these these are the games, right, that always make a difference when we get back to conference tournament play towards the end in March. And this will be a game we talk about when we talk about the end uh, end of the conference regular regular season. And that's why you see it out there. You know, seven point game right now, but still anybody's game. And if St. John's can start knocking down some shots from the perimeter, it could be a totally different ball game in the second half. And obviously, it could mean a lot for those standings. Hard to believe it is, in fact, the final Friday in January, our last full month of the regular season. Coming up, halftime here at Fitterman Pavilion. It's Villanova by seven. It's Big East Women's Basketball, and it's presented by SoFi. You're watching Villanova Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We're on it, and we got to raise it up. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. A couple minutes from getting the second half underway here at Fitterit Pavilion. Villanova by seven on top of St. John's. And 
and just how did the Wildcats do it early on? Uh, St. John's with something to say uh, after this had been a, a sizable Villanova advantage. KB and then Hoppy Sean. Yeah, needed to get them going in that first half. Finally got a couple of good shots. Great drive underneath there by Tiana England. Haven't called her name out a lot so far in this game either, but Mary Gadeka going to work on the offensive end. Gets the bounce. That's what the shooters get on the offensive end when they have it rolling. Obviously great stuff from Bridget Hurley as well. Great job on the offensive end. Not, you know, rushing, not being able to find the space, but being able to take her time, being able to knock down a couple of shots, and then Maddie Segrist doing what she does down low. Basket and the foul. She's done what she likes to do in the first half. She gets inside, knocked down a couple of tough three-point shots as well. Gadeka at the end of that first half really asserted herself on the offensive end, but what Bridget Hurley he was able to do, chipping in four points and a couple of tough shots, five rebounds as well, but 21 combined from Maddie and Mary, almost outscoring St. John's by themselves at the moment. But the big thing in the first half, that bagel right there in the three-point side for St. John's, 0 for 8 so far from three-point land. The first time all season and a half the Johnnies haven't knocked down a triple. Really surprising, but just shows you how good perimeter defense has been from the three-point side of things for Villanova. St. John's will have to make some adjustments, try to find some better looks. There it is reiterating, and I mean, Pretty shocking the way St. John's has been playing a late three game winning streak, but that's how good Villanova's defense can be, especially here at the Finn. I mean, it's been really impressive to watch and even down low, I mean, it seemed like the guards for St. John's were having their way first parts of that first quarter, but ever since then, with Gadeka, Segrist, Herlihy, they've all chipped in defensively in the paint and it's led to good offense on the offensive and they forced some turnovers as well. They've been able to knock down four three point shots in that first half and they're playing their kind of basketball that Harry Pareto would hope for. And it's been a strong first half, but like we saw at the beginning of that second quarter, St. John's can really get it going in a matter of moments from the perimeter. And if Hoppy, KB, those kind of players can get going for St. John's, could be a totally different complexion in this second half. But Gadeka and Secrets have been the catalyst so far for Villanova. Red Storm basketball to start this third quarter. And that Villanova three-point defense leading the league both overall and in conference games. Sub 28% for opponents. Hoppy continues that drought, but big offensive board. And Kadeja Bailey with what's her second bucket of the basketball game. And we're at a five-point game again. That's part of what St. John's can do, chip away the rebound advantage. And weak side right there, an easy putback for Bailey. Really wasn't contested going back up with it. Backdoor cut worked well for Villanova the early portion of the first half. Wildcats have had to work a little harder as of late for their offense. Segrist, who had missed the last couple minutes with the two personal fouls, can't convert. And quickly the other way, Alston did a lot of this early. And you might as well call that a pass to Bailey. And the arrow will go back to the Cats. Like you mentioned, Matt, that felt like the first couple possessions of the first quarter where St. John's was kind of getting whatever they wanted on that baseline and just couldn't finish it. You're right, it was more like a pass than a shot. At least it looked like that. Not sure what she was trying to do there, but leads to a jump ball and Villanova get the favorable spot on the arrow. Raven James, who had missed a good portion of the first half as well with a couple personals. Harry Peretta happy to have her back. One of his players that he told us probably doesn't get enough credit. James with the shot clock at 10. Good look. But nobody home on the offensive glass. KB with the defensive rebound. Might be even that much more impressive what Villanova did considering Raven James really wasn't a factor like you mentioned in that first half. And pretty impressive because she's so important handling the basketball. And speaking of handle, Bailey continues to be high percentage. All of her makes from about five feet and under for Kadeja Bailey. Well, the threes aren't going in. Try to find your way into the paint, and St. John's getting a lot more high percentage looks, and they're off to another good start at the beginning of this third quarter. It has to be a little weird for the Red Storm, so reliant on the perimeter. And there's an uncharacteristic make for Unken. Just her ninth three of the year for what's only a 15% shooter. 
Feels like it's worth more than three points every time a role player for Villanova knocks in a three. That's a big shot after St. John's went on a bit of a run there. She becomes the fifth Wildcat to score, but Alston quickly with a response. Alyssa Drip Alston had it going early on and able to bring her team back to within four. Eight now for Alston. Nice setup, Ankin with Gadeka on the block and the second chance. Just 13 for Mary Gadeka. sorry about that, Sean. No, too strong on that second attempt, but look at Alston, so smooth on that take to the bucket. Great action on both ends. This feels like the early part of the game when she was just going to the basket, either off the dribble or on the backdoor cut, pretty much at will. Made it look easy, didn't she? I mean, just found that space and that quickness, the acceleration to the bucket. I mean, that's what makes her so tough to stop. And when she finds some space, I mean, there's almost no stopping her when she gets ahead of steam to the basket. Leading Red Storm with what's the 10, with now 10 points. Ankin with a second three. Six now for Cameron Ankin, what a lift. Outside of Kadeka and Segrist, she's their next leading scorer tonight. Dare I say it, Cameron Onkin is hot right now. Back-to-back <laughs> yeah. -back triples, huge for the Wildcats. The freshman, Unique Drake, going to the floor, nearly gave it away. KB open and can't leave her. A career almost 35% shooter came in with 120 of them. You can't give her any breathing space, Matt, and there's Exhibit A right there. Took a little bit and, you know, took an inch, turned it into a mile, knocked down a huge shot. Nine now for Alicia Kaby. Almost at the halfway point of the third quarter. Pace starting to pick up a little bit here. Nice seal for Segrist. And give her what's now 12. Villanova pushes this to six. 25 of the 40 between Segrist and Gadeka. And quick trigger on the mid range. Johnny's unable to hit the offensive glass. After the miss by Unique Drake. But the arrow stays at this end. Boy, what hasn't Cameron Onkin been doing in, in this half? I mean, on the floor, battling for the loose ball. Great block by, I believe that was Hurley. He was able to swat that away without getting the foul call and ends up being side out for St. John's after Segris made a tough shot at the other end of the floor. Thought she wasn't going to be in a good spot on the baseline, but got it to go off a good pass by Gadeka and then Cameron Onkin is doing it on both ends right now. Agent zero, if you will, for Villanova. And all of a sudden, the Wildcats are really feeling it defensively, trying to clamp back down on the Red Storm. Good post position for Farley. The find for Alston. And Eureka, there it is. Only the second made three, both in this half for St. John's. Boy, the pace of this game is really starting to get fun. Both teams are finally finding some space to knock down some shots and the Red Storm are getting into a groove offensively that we didn't quite see in the first half. Alston now with 13, her 15th double figure game of the year in the eighth straight. Nice feedback, James. Onkin though, too much. Off balance. And England and Alston setting up the elbow, J. And what's already been a big second half for Alyssa Alston, seven points. 15 total. How quickly can she get going? It's incredible. I mean, this whole quarter has been all her for the Red Storm, and they've done a heck of a job getting back to what they like to do offensively. Segris, the offensive glass after the James miss, and St. John's with a chance to take its first lead since it was 12-11. Johnny's largest of the basketball game was three zip after what was three straight points for Drip Alston? That seems like many moons ago. KB with the up fake, and there it is. St. John's with its first lead since the early first quarter. And a timeout for Harry Peretta. With under four minutes to play here in the third, Johnny's getting hot from the outside. It's Alston pulling the trigger. And a one point Red Storm lead. 15 now for Drip. Big East Women's Basketball presented by SoFi. You're watching St. John's Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network.
the amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Artemella and the Red Storm. Matt Martucci, Sean St. Jock. Well, I, I know the perimeter's obvious, but what else have the Johnnies been doing as far as how you've seen it? I, it just feels like night and day, right? You talked about many moons ago they had the lead. It feels like a new moon uh, as far as the offense is concerned for, for the Red Storm. I mean, the guards are getting back to what they do. They're getting inside. They're making plays. They're looking for open looks on the outside. I mean, Alston looks like a, a completely different player from that second quarter. I mean, she was really hesitant at times. I think part of that was Villanova's perimeter defense. And I, I thought another part of that was, you know, too much isolation, I think, at times. Maybe just taking too quick of shots at times for, for Coach Joe Tarnamella's bunch. But it just got back to Alston dictating things on the offensive end. And when, you know, there's a reason these last three games she's been the star of the show for St. John's. I mean, she can do it all on both ends and when it seemed like Lauren Onkin was kind of putting Villanova on her shoulders for a little while there now all of a sudden we're seeing how good Alston can be for the Red Storm and like you said all of a sudden they've got the lead and all the momentum right now. Shot clock cut in half for Villanova. Wind it down these final three minutes of this third quarter where St. John's has shot almost 62 percent. Seven to shoot Herlihy at what was four first half points. James, one to shoot, did they get it off? Kateka apparently did, but long, and Villanova has opened up, uh, you know, efficient, but not quite on the level of St. John's. Only 36% shooting in this quarter for the Wildcats. That looked like a St. John's second quarter possession there from Villanova, not a lot of good ball movement until the end of the shot clock, Kateka had to rush it. Hoppy, and it's the main line wedgie. Mm. Quickly broken up by, by Madison Segrist. So 41-40, the St. John's lead for Joe Tartamella and the Red Storm. Big East basketball presented by SoFi. You're watching Villanova Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you.
Well, exactly what you would have expected based on the first one with these two teams. St. John's with a one-point lead on Villanova. Here to open up the final Friday night of Big East play in January. The Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep returns to Wintrust Arena, downtown Chicago, March 6th to the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tur Tournament Championship now on sale starting at just $50. For tickets, visit BigEast.com slash WBB tickets. You going to Chicago there, Sean St. Jock? You jump, jumping on a plane? Saving up my money, man, as we speak. Hopefully getting there in time. You can't miss that event. I mean, it's just one of those things. I mean, it's great to have it back to back with the men's tournament at the Garden as well. And it's, just, I mean, the drama at both tournaments every year. I mean, it's just a can't miss event. And if you haven't had the chance to go, I mean, either way, Wind Trust or the Garden, I mean, it's one of those things. It, it, these are can't miss events in March that you have to get yourself to at some point. And as someone who's had the chance to cover both tournaments, I mean, it's just a ton of fun. And the, and the action is as good as it gets in any conference in college basketball, men's or women's. Now the question for you, can anybody knock off DePaul? It's going to be a tough ask. I mean, obviously, they're going to be pushed to the limit. I mean, if, if there's anything that I could say about the Big East is that you're going to get everybody's best shot in that Big East tournament, no question about that. It's your season's on the line. you got to get ready to roll in March. March, crazy things can happen. I mean, there's no question about that. But, boy, it's tough to bet against Doug Bruno, isn't it? He's just shown time and time again. So tough to beat him in the tournament, especially when it's in Chicago. Out of this timeout, Anken got the good look. She's already made two of those. But the deep rebound, and England wants it herself with the lefty scoop and score. Goodness gracious, how good was that? End to end like a shot. 9-0 St. John's run in almost the last three minutes. I haven't seen her really flourish yet in this game, Matt. That was really impressive. Why she's one of the best guards around. Shot clock at 10 for Hurley and the Wildcats. They missed their last three field goal attempts. Karanji able to take that apart. Boy, I saw the look on Coach Joe Tartamella, and he just put his hands up as if to say, I mean, we can't do anything about that. That's the shot we want Villanova to take when it's not one of their studs, and Karanji picks up a huge tray for Villanova right there. The native of off the PA turnpike in Lansdale, now with what's eight on a perfect three for three. And we get a foul away from the basketball. Or actually, I'm sorry, just, been a, yeah, it was just a kick. It was just a kick. Might have been a kick there, Matt. Yeah, that was, that was tough for Villanova. They had a chance to go to the other end on a turnover there, but Karanji kind of just stubs her toe on the, on the ball there. Nice position for Farley. Got the seal and the right block and the layup. She's had a couple of moments, Matt, where she's gotten deep inside the paint and pays it off right there with an easy layup. Raven Farley, one of the most unique personalities, according to Joe Tartamella. Has her own YouTube channel, I found out. Hollywood Ray is actually her nickname. Oh, wow. Posted uh, a little Q&A in the, the past week or so. Gadeka almost had the answer that time for Nova. Tracks down her own miss. Final minute here in the third quarter of a back and forth affair. Matt Martucci, Saint, uh, Sean St. Jacques with what's 10 to shoot for Villanova. Gadeka gave up the dribble, wants it back. Five on the shot clock. Gadeka. And maybe a little too unselfish. 14 seconds worth of shot clock, game clock differential. And England forcing the issue, trying to get the two for one. And we'll go to the line. Well, it starts with Farley at the other end. Might as well say it now for like and subscribe to that YouTube channel. What a great job on the baseline to get the steal. And then like a, oh man, lightning down the court. Tiana England gets to the bucket and draws the foul. Two, two chances where she's looked like a track star going end to end on this court and has a chance for a pair at the line. I think what's interesting about this matchup and it's just, just college basketball in general, sometimes when you have a second meeting between two teams, the cast of characters in terms of who does what can be completely different. You look at the first matchup, Tiana England was massive here it's been more of uh, Alyssa Alston and Alicia Kaby of the Philadelphia homecoming and we haven't seen quite as much a hoppy in England doing what they typically do. It's a great point and you know kind of reminds me of what you know, 
Coach Harry Peretta told us earlier this week on the phone where, you know, in the second matchup, you know, especially in this conference where you play each other twice every year and the coaches know each other so well and the players get to see each other so much during the year and you got to change some things up and other players do have to play better and step up and we just saw a big shot from Karanji earlier. Hurley, he's had a couple of big baskets for Villanova and, you know, St. John's, like you said, the, the characters haven't changed, but who's stepped up has. And that's why the Red Storm kind of been able to gain some momentum and get back on top in this game. And Tian England, although has been quiet, has made a couple of big time plays in this third quarter. Tough miss for England. Ends up being the fifth one for Red Storm. For what's normally a 75% shooter on the year, but only 65 in conference games. Could be too costly once for Tiana England. Chance to make it a two possession game. Those are the ones that hurt, especially at the end of a quarter. karanji has been good. That's her first miss of the night. And St. John's with a chance to complete that two for one. Alston nearly double dribbled, but able to take care of it on the mid range. Oh, she is cooking right now. You know when that shot's going in, she is on fire right now. What a third quarter for Alston. 17 now for Alyssa Alston. Three seconds left. Karanji wants it herself on the turnaround and would have beat the buzzer. But St. John's with a 24-point third quarter to erase its halftime deficit and go into the fourth up by four. Joe Tartamella's kids trying to take the rematch. It's Big East women's basketball, and it's presented by SoFi. Aust Alston with the hot hand. You're watching St. John's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Villanovan in 30 seconds? Well, Villanovan's aim high. Top 50 national university high. We think fast and stay connected. V's up. Villanovans think deeply, push boundaries, and go, go, go! Still with me? We climb corporate ladders in these ladders. This campus is our home, but you can find us almost anywhere. Villanovans have big hearts to solve even bigger problems, and we celebrate together. Ignite change. Go Nova. Well, quite the rhythmic third quarter for St. John's. Red Storm now up by four after outscoring Villanova 24 to 13. Matt Martucci and Sean St. Jock setting up for, for quite this 10 minute stage. We, we might need another extra period. Uh, I've got five in my back pocket just in <laughs> case we need it. But I'll tell you what, I mean, looking at just the stats, I mean, obviously we've seen the momentum shift to St. John's and we've seen Alston really show why she was our player to watch and how good she's been playing over the last three for St. John's, but 28 to 14 points in the paint right now for the Red Storm. And listen, that this three game winning streak they've been going on, it's been a lot more of the three point shot, it's been a lot more of the guard play on the perimeter, but they've been getting inside, they've been feeding the bigs, or they've been just getting to the bucket themselves and making shots. I mean, look at this tough shot from England in transition, showing the speed and the acceleration of the bucket, and then an amazing move inside by KB back earlier in the third quarter. England setting up Alston here. Elbow jumper just outside the free throw line. I mean, it's it's been the defense from St. John's, but then the transition offense for the Red Storm, making good decisions and being able to find open looks. St. John's has been, it's been night and day. I mean, really, since the end of the first quarter, it's been all St. John's in the third, and they've got the momentum and the ball here in the fourth. 
Shot almost 65% in that quarter. Alston, a big reason why, and it continues into the fourth. Boy, when you're hot, you're hot, and she is just all on it right now for the Red Storm. That looked so easy, and when you see Raven James getting ready to check back in, they're gonna hope she can hopefully weather the Red Storm for Alston. Gadeka this time with the left. Says, I'll see your layup and I'll raise you one. Yeah, they needed that, Villanova. It felt like that at some point, one of these two stars for the Wildcats has got to get going again, and Gadeka forcing the issue, gets a, a big bucket there for Villanova. Anglin. Good spacing of the floor to find Alston. Seven to shoot. Farley had been big, but a miss, a rare one for her off the bench tonight. If you just happened to join us, St. John's had what was a three-point lead early on in the first quarter. Then it was pretty much all Villanova until the start of the third. Johnny's able to take it. Segrist with the miss and knocked out of bounds and goes back over to St. John's. Just feels like, I mean, this is, you know, maybe beating a little bit of a dead horse here, but at some point, Matty Segrist has got to get going again for Villanova. I mean, they're just too important, her and Gadeka to what Villanova does on offense. I mean, obviously the role players have chipped in. Ankin has six, Hurley he has four. Nothing yet from Raven James who dealt with foul trouble in the first half, but you saw the basket from Gadeka. Segrist is gonna have to make a good amount here in the fourth quarter if Villanova wants to turn this around. Again, Farley with position, but got stripped into the tie up. And the arrow over to Harry Paredes, Wildcats. Great help defense down low. I mean, this is Gadeka one-on-one -on -one initially but it's Seagrest and then Hurley, he sticks an arm in there and he's able to get the jump ball. I mean, that's just great help defense for Villanova. I mean, that's the key. I mean, that's the, the DNA of this year's Villanova team is their defense and could be the catalyst to get back ahead in this game. Uh, you talked about Matty Seagrest. Has only been held under 14 points three times the whole year and only one game without double figures. Freshmen like her don't come around all that often. 10 to shoot, James getting it back from Onken. Little two game, Gadeka and Segrist using the window. That's exactly what Harry Peretta was hoping for. That's what they've been trying to add to this offense and it worked out perfectly that time. Big bucket there for Matty Segrist. More than half the points tonight from the Segrist Gadeka duo. KB with the adjustment again on that right block. She did it on the opposite end in the first half. How strong was that to the 10? Might have gotten uh, missed on a foul call there as well. There was a little bit of contact down there, but just a strong drive to the basket through some contact. And St. John's now is full flowing on offense through their backcourt mates. James leaning into it. And the first one of the night, just her 15th three of the year. A good lift here in the fourth quarter from Raven James, but a foul on this rebound. Crowd doesn't like it with Nova now down by a point. Well, it was a late whistle. There's no question about that, and it wasn't from an official underneath the basket. I think that's the right call. Went into the defender, Maddie Seegers. Now, here's the thing. She kept her arms up, so you're thinking that she did her job, but she went into the defender and initiated the, I'm sorry, into the driver, initiated the contact. That's a big fourth foul on Maddie Segrist. However, a big free throw miss as well at the line by Bailey. 62 and a half percent. The frustration from Harry Peretta have it to send Brooke Mullen to the scorer's table. One more coming. And to be fair to coach, he doesn't have the best angle of that look. He's just seeing Maddie Seagrest with her arms up. He's thinking, all right, we're good, no contact. But there was some contact underneath, body to body, and that's gonna get called. Someone had to call it. It took a little while there, but they were able to make the right call underneath the basket. Seven now off the bench for Kadeja Bailey. Mullen off the bench. Kadeka and Herlihy along with Onkin and Raven James. Inside seven minutes left, what's been a good one all night. Villanova controlled the first half, all Red Storm here in the second. Herlihy getting the contact. 
you'd think it'd get a little easier for St. John's because you're thinking, well, we just got to stop Gadeka, but Hurley, he gets inside, gets hit right on the arm as she goes up, and she's had a couple of really nice moments on the offensive end tonight for Villanova, and they might need to go to her one or two more times in this fourth quarter on the offensive end with Segris in foul trouble. Bridget Hurley, though, sub 60%, little less than 56 in conference play. Neither team has done itself any favors from the line. Missed them both. Cats now six of 11, Red Storm eight of 15. Good ball movement, Alston had a look but passed it up. Shot clock cut in half. Hoppy had to be careful there, nearly carried it. KB forcing the issue and Herlihy ripping away the big board. What's her seventh of the basketball game? And yep. maybe not Harry Peretta's first choice for a ball handler to bring it over. Took the words right out of my mouth, but she did the job to get it across half court that time, and now they can initiate their offense. James going to use Gadeka. Nice entry in the wheel, but he, she hooked her. Offensive foul on Mary Gadeka. Boy, and she had the size mismatch, Matt Dell. I mean, this is exactly what Villanova wanted with KB. And yeah, oh boy, a little elbow there on KB in the grill. And boy, she didn't need to be that aggressive with the hook going down low there. And instead, it forces a turnover. St. John's gets away with one a little bit there due to the mismatch. But at the moment, St. John's still holding on to a two point lead ever so slightly. Harry Peretta wondering what they're going to review here, and it's I get the the Must use be. of the yeah, the yeah. use of the elbow. It has to be our crew tonight. Cameron Inouye along with Bruce Morris and Fatou Sissoko Stevens. Take another look at it here. I mean, this is exactly what Villanova. I mean, great pass by James. He knew exactly where the ball was going. It's an easy hook call, but did she follow through with that elbow? It's well, I'm not a referee, but that looked pretty clear from my vantage point that maybe she went a little too aggressive inside there. It's going to be interesting to see what the officials decide to do here. This is a very crucial juncture in the game here. It's clearly a, a, a hook, but then the follow through on the elbow right into the teeth almost of, of KB who stood her ground down low for St. John's, and they're going to have a couple of seconds here to See if this maybe is a little bit more than just a common foul down low. And it's crazy because when, as soon as she gets the ball there, right, you're looking at, you know, the matchup she's got, and you're thinking, all right, that's two points. Villanova should be getting two points there. And instead, it's not only an offensive foul. It could turn into a lot more than that. But we'll have to see what the call is here. And it just looks like a regular run-of-the-mill inbounds. Sound nothing it intentional. Might have been unintentional. Yep. I think that was what it comes down to there. And... It was a basketball move too, and I think that was kind of what dictated the call there, despite how bad it did look on the elbow contact. And Villanova gets away with one after St. John's kind of got away with one having the mismatch, but Gadeka instead just picks up a common foul and we play on. Farley trying to pass out of the double and just ended up throwing it away. Johnny's have not turned it over much tonight, just their sixth, but it's the second one of this quarter. If you just joined us, no Matty Segrist on the bench with what's four personals, but waiting at the scorer's table. Eight to shoot for Gadeka and the Wildcats. Wants it herself. And Hurley, he had to be careful. Nearly fouled Austin. Nova in what looks like an extended 2-3. With James and Mullen up at the top. Hoppy really yet to get going, but right on cue. For Q. Love the adjustment initially by Harry Peretta, but when you've got players that can shoot over the top, and again, we haven't talked about Q Hoppy a lot in this second half. Timeout for Villanova, but on cue, she knocks it down. And it's a four-point St. John's lead. Harry Peretta wanting to talk things over 
with his kids. You're watching Big East Women's Basketball presented by SoFi. Potential big finish coming here on the main line. You're watching St. John's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Fifty-four, fifty. it's St. John's on top of Villanova with just over four and a half minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Big East Women's Basketball, it's presented by SoFi. Matt Martucci, Sean St. Jock, treated to a good one tonight as St. John's has controlled a good portion of the second half. And there's Hoppy right on cue. Yeah, what a big shot that was for her. And, and really, you know, she you mentioned it earlier, she hasn't had too many chances. I mean, 0 of 5 from deep tonight. and two of nine overall from the field, but when you're a great player, you gotta make a couple of big plays for your team at some point in the game. Those are big shots that she did make in this game in critical moments. And, you know, listen, England only has four, Hoppy only has four, seven from Bailey, but it helps, you know, Alston has 19 tonight for the Red Storm. They kind of called her number in the biggest moments tonight. And that's how, that's the, the sign of a good team when you have multiple players that can hurt you at any point during the game. And it's kind of what this Villanova team is trying to develop into as the season goes on. But, you know, Hurley, he's made some plays, and so is Onkin, and Segrist is back in the game with four and a half to go on four fouls. James with what's 12 to shoot. Segrist on the turnaround, and that's a tough place to go one and done coming out of the timeout for Peretta. England gives it right back though with a quick miss. I mean, if Maddie doesn't have four fouls there, she's taking that to the basket. Didn't want to risk it there and didn't take the best shots, but St. John's kind of rushed it a little bit. Didn't really have to with a four point lead. And now Villanova gets a foul off the ball here. Alicia Kaby hit with it. What's her second personal, second team foul of this fourth quarter. So still a couple more to give. No points in the last three plus for Villanova. They could really use a basket here. Mary Gadeka, along with Maddie Segrist, Cameron Onkin, Raven James, Bridget Herlihy for the Wildcats. Gadeka with the shot clock at five. James having to be the bailout and force the contact. She'll go to the line. Big time drive at the end of the shot clock here by Raven James. I mean, Coach Harry Prada, every time I've talked to them about Raven James this year, he's just glowed over her development, not only at the point guard position, but just defensively and making key plays like that. She made a big shot earlier in the season and a win over Seton Hall and developing into a big time player for this Villanova team and making some big plays down the stretch and trying to whittle that deficit down. One of two for James. Four points for her tonight. Cuts the deficit down to a single possession. Go, 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 
winner, at the very least, keeps their position in the standings. Villanova came in in a three-way tie for third. St. John's a three-way tie for second, but Bailey helping them with the idea that they could stay there. Nine now for Kadeja Bailey. Seems like every time Bailey's been open, they have found her down low, and once again, using her athleticism to rise and get it, and then bring it back down for the bucket, although a silly foul off the ball there. I think that was KB trying to stop Gadeka from getting open. That's the last thing Coach Tartamella wanted to see with 3.05 to go. You do not want to give Villanova a chance to keep going to the free throw line as the fouls pile up. And next one from here on out will be bonus time for the Wildcats at the fourth team foul. Gadeka one on one, wants KB. Good help from Hoppy with the shot clock winding down. James a little too gun shy. Down to five. Segrist in desperation. And Ankit couldn't grab the offensive glass. Big possession for the Johnnies to really separate here. That was a big clear out to get that rebound down low, Matt. Now this is a big, big possession for how this last two and a half is going to play out. Shot clock cut in half. England at the controls. Using KB. Might have traveled. Shot clock down to five for Hoppy. The little exaggerated step, but missed it. Wildcats again. Another chance to bring this back to a possession. Will we be talking about that miss later on? Segrist quick on the trigger, plus the foul. What a seal by Madison Segrist. What a huge swing, Matt. That could turn out to be a, a big time chance at a layup on one end, chance for a three point play for Segrist at the other after a bunny miss at one end. Boy, do they need their stars for Villanova to shine. That's a huge play for the freshman and she knocks it back down to a two point game. 17 now for Segrist. Too shy of game honors with Alyssa Alston for St. John's. Biggest defensive possession of the night goes without saying for the Cats. And they threw it away, England. Looking for Bailey who's been so big on that block here in the second half. She just made a very similar play earlier in the quarter. The pass was a lot better than that one was. That one sailed right between her hands. Huge possession here for Villanova. Seventh St. John's turnover. Three of them though have come in this fourth quarter. Down to 90 seconds, and Ankit gave it right back. Can England capitalize? Out there with KB and Bailey, Hoppy and Alston, and a timeout for Joe Tartamella. Love the timeout here by Joe Tartamella. Couple of mistakes on both ends here by both teams, really. I mean, you had a wide open layup, really, for Hoppy. They kind of could have put the game away, and she misses it. On the other end, a big chance for Villanova. Segrist gets a three-point play, but then you throw it away on the baseline here on this last possession for St. John's prior to then Villanova giving it right back. So I think this is a great opportunity for Joe Tardabella to draw something up, probably for Alston, I would think. You try to get her a good look inside to try to make it a four-point game and then hope your defense can try to close this game out and try, and try your best to maybe drive at Maddie Segrist if you can. I and mean, that'd be the perfect scenario to pick up her fifth foul. But you're just looking for an easy look inside, as easy as you can, to try to make it a two possession game. That makes it a lot more difficult for Villanova. It's about the time to tell you that Villanova has not lost a game this year in which it led at the half. 8-0 are the Wildcats in that spot. But trailing by two. Hoppy with the shot clock down to what's now 12. England using the screen from Alicia Kaby and a big strip, Onkin. That looked like it might have skipped off of England. Wonder if they're gonna have another look at this. Onkin definitely got a hand in there. We'll, we'll have another look and, ooh, I don't, that's close. I'm not so sure if that did hit off her thigh. It was close. James trying to go up the elevator, but Bailey a little too tall. Shot clock though down to three. KB with two on the shot clock, got it blocked. Villanova can tie or take the lead. We're inside of a minute to play. Segrist this time opposite block. 
Going after the offensive rebound, couldn't get it. Can England and the Johnnies close? You do not have to foul if you're Villanova. 15 seconds and change differential shot and game clock. 10 to shoot for England. Now down to six. England in on Onken. Two to shoot. Hoppy for the dagger. And he couldn't do it. And a timeout for Villanova. Herlihy with maybe the biggest rebound of her career. 13 seconds left. Thought on the first end, Matt, that shot by Seegers that she took wasn't the best look, and I, and I thought that that could have been a better look there for Villanova, but defensively, they make St. John's take a tough, contested three-point look. You'd expect Hoppy to maybe make that on another night. Tough, contested shot, she doesn't make it. Here, it's pretty simple. Who's open, Gadeka or Seegers? We get her the ball, we try to force overtime. Seems easy but it's been tough to get them looks tonight. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Peretta decides to drop. They've got a lot of time to get this up the floor and get a good look. But I, if I'm Villanova, if I'm gonna lose this game, I want a good look inside. I don't wanna be settling for a three. I wanna get the ball to the basket. If I have to try to draw a foul, I'll draw a foul. Here's the look at the other end. I mean, Seacrest probably should have kicked this out. I mean, this is not the opportunity for her to just throw that up. Sworn, really, I mean, England could have easily came over there and made it even tougher. Probably should have kicked that out, but in the end, they get the stop they want. They can either go back to Seekers if they want, but either way, Villanova's got to try to get this to the basket, either try to draw a foul or tie this game up. Needed overtime in Queens, 67-62. Back on January 5th, Villanova won. They get the ball over the midline, thanks to the rule changes from a few years ago, after you call timeout, have the opportunity to advance it. Makes it even easier. You can use a little bit of clock here, but know who's getting the ball right off from the inbounds here. They get it to Gadeka. Cross court for James with 10 seconds. Off the bounce, contact, lost the basketball. Five seconds, Segrist for the tie! With 3.4 left, Villanova knocks this up again. And who else would it be? What a huge, huge play by Raven James. She goes down, she has nowhere to go. She stays, keeps her head up, finds Segrist. She gets the bounce, tie game. Huge play by Raven James to keep it alive. And Maddie Segrist hits the biggest shot of her first collegiate season. You may want to pull those five minutes out of your back I got them ready for you. Okay. I got them ready, <laughs> just in case. Boy, what an inverse uh, of the third quarter where it was all St. John's. There's time for St. John's here. That's why I'm keeping the five in back pocket just in case. Because Fair enough. Hoppy has got a chance. The ball's going to advance again here, Matt. And I got to tell you, I'd be shocked if this doesn't go to Alston here off the inbounds. I'd give it right to her. If she's got a lane, she can go in for maybe a floater or try to draw a foul. If not, she's in a bad position. I'd let her chuck up a three and try to steal this one. She and Segrist. 19 apiece for their respective teams tonight. 24 point third quarter for St. John's. And what was a four point lead, Villanova with a 13 point fourth quarter to hold the Johnnies to nine to this point in these first nine minutes and 57 seconds. Tiana England to inbound. And Villanova force overtime. And St. John's end this now. Here we go. It's Alston. Two seconds. Got a shot for the win. Going to overtime here at the Finn. They got a great look, Matt. I mean, this is exactly what I was thinking here. Alston and maybe some contact off the ball there. They let it go. Might have just been incidental on both ends. And Boy, I mean, the way she's been playing, you'd expect her to have a really good chance of knocking that in. And instead, Matt, the five are out of the pocket. We're going overtime. Well, we're, we'll reset everything when we return. 56 apiece. What more could you ask for? St. John's and Nova. Big East women's basketball presented by SoFi. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. 
Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Fifty-six apiece and free basketball. St. John's of Villanova in overtime for the second time in less than four weeks. What more could you ask for? Matt Martucci and Sean St. Jock. Let's get it started. The extra five minutes are out of Sean's pocket. Let's have some fun. <laughs> out on the table, ready to roll, Matt. I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean, after the first meeting, the fact that it's been topped, we're going back to overtime again. It's been a heck of a game. Can't ask for much more than that on a Friday night. And for those that have stuck around on the Big East Digital Network, you've gotten your money's worth and then some tonight. It, it was Madison Segrist, Maddie Segrist with the game tying shot from the right baseline. James has already hit one of those and continues to be the hero here late. Boy, she's a big shot maker, isn't she? She's made a couple of huge ones already in conference play, opening up the extra session with a big time triple. Seven now for Raven James. Can the Wildcats lock up the Red Storm? Hoppy might have been a little quick on the trigger. And Villanova with a chance to get itself a working margin here in overtime. It's been the story of Hoppy's night, just not quite in the flow of the offense. And big chance here. Segris with the seal, everything but the finish there on the block. Hoppy with a little bit of a ward with the arm, this time uses the left. Back to within one is St. John's. That's why she's one of the best players in this conference, Matt. What a play inside a Euro step. Gets to the bucket with ease. What a phenomenal play. That's by far the best play she's made tonight. I'll make another point, Sean. When you're one of the top four scorers in this conference, you know what you can get away with as well. Was able to get some separation with that arm, but they didn't call it. Shot clock down to five for Gadeka. And nearly got the spin, but St. John's with a chance to take the lead. Alston and England, the adjustment, and Herlihy the block. Second chance for Bailey, and Villanova hangs tough again. Herlihy knocking that off the second time, Matt. Big time defensive plays down the stretch, and this is another big possession as Villanova try to create some separation. Played two minutes already here in the extra period. And a foul from behind on St. John's. Might have been a push in the back. Tough to tell from at least my angle if there was a lot of contact there, but Seagrass certainly went forward as she tried to lunge up and get that. Another look at it here as Ankin tried to feed her inside. Yeah, there's definitely a push off by Alston. Down low, that's a good call inside and big free throws here for Maddie Seagrass. Was three of four before that one. Now 20 on the night for Maddie Segris, the 11th time this year she's had 20 or more. And got them both. Back to a full possession. You feel like Villanova's worked so hard to get themselves to this point. But Hoppy with another answer, yet again. Four now here in the extra period. She only had four of the previous four quarters. He's picking a good time to get going here in overtime. That's a big bucket for St. John's, and now it turns into another pretty big possession here for Villanova. Segrist and Gadeka, they had the backdoor cut working early, but that was around the first quarter. James with maybe a force on the scoop. And England out of the pack. St. John's again, chance to reclaim the lead. Alston, the shovel. England along with KB, Alston and Hoppy, and then Bailey in off the bench. 
Good ball movement. Hoppy for the lead is long. And out of bounds, last touch by Kadeja Bailey. St. John's is contesting. They're gonna, they're gonna talk this one over, I think. And they might change this one. Brian Morris and Fatou Sissoko Stevens talking it over. And we'll get another look at this. They've, they've done a good job on the reviews tonight yeah. in terms of getting them done in, in a timely manner and obviously coming to the right conclusion. That might be St. John's basketball there. I think Hurley, he might have had her hand on that one last. If Again, always so tough with those. You know, it's, you, know, you look for ball direction, you know, where the ball deflects, and, and you're looking for, obviously, as best you can, who touched it last year. Another, another angle on it here, and yeah, that's off early. Great job by our camera crew. I, I think that's that's got to be the right call. I think Joe Tartamella and company had a legitimate case there, and it'll be interesting to see if this does get overruled. By the way, last St. John's lead all the way back at 2.03 of the fourth quarter. Since then, it's been Villanova since the Seagrass game-tying bucket. St. John's had a look. Alston had an open look on a jumper. But here we are with Villanova, a chance to sweep the season series and more importantly, pick up what's a sixth conference win and keep itself at the very least in that three-way tie for third. Certainly with Villanova, obviously, you know, you make up that game that St. John's has on you at the moment. And it looks like they did switch the call. I think that was the, the right play in the end. And St. John's gets another chance here. This is a big possession. And I think it's interesting that Alston's going to inbound here. They might get it right back to her, maybe find Q, who's made a couple of baskets, Matt, in this overtime period. Big steal by James, who since late in the fourth quarter has been massive for the Wildcats. How good has she been on both ends, really? Phenomenal job. And another big time play defensively when they needed it for Villanova. Well, not the only game in overtime right now in conference. Herlihy with the up fake. And Ankin, big shot! Her third three of the night to push this to four, nine for Cameron Ankin. Only a 15% three-point shooter coming in. And a timeout for Joe Tartamella. Was about to say though, Sean, Butler, if you will, involved uh, in, excuse the pun, as we get a look at the Ankin three, involved in a proverbial dog fight. There you go. 53 apiece, the Bulldogs and Xavier. So we're not the only OT game. Well, it's fitting that two of the bigger rivals in the conference, two separate games going head to head. Obviously we know how deep the Butler Xavier rivalry runs on both ends as well and boy I mean Cameron Onkin I mean we talk about the little plays that she's done tonight on the defensive end her rebounding acumen as well but the fact that you know when Villanova's needed big plays from the supporting cast we're not talking about the stars obviously Maddie Segrist has been phenomenal and Mary Gadek has made big shots we have come to expect that from two really good players in this conference, but Cameron Onkin, I mean, when they've needed her to step up on the offensive end, her number's been called, and she has made huge, huge plays on the offensive end. None bigger than that, and now a chance at a big time defensive stop. But St. John's, again, there's plenty of time. Go to the bucket, you have a chance to cut it back down to two and reset things on the defensive end. But no, there's no question about that. That's the biggest shot of the game so far from Cameron Onkin after Segrist sent us to overtime. Johnny's really need this one if they want this three-way tie to remain intact. Right now, the other two teams with them. We talked about Butler in overtime. Marquette at the half with Providence with what's a 12-point halftime lead. So it could be a, a two-way tie. It could be all three. Or it could be if St. John's can't get this, you might drop down into that third tier that we talked about. It's so crazy how close it is and how one game can really change the complexion in this conference. Again, we're just starting the second half of the season. I mean, of the conference season. That's what's so much fun about this. There's still so much left, but this game, I mean, you could just tell that the, the, the passion we've seen on both ends after big shots and, and things like that. The crowd's been into it. The Finns been rocking in the second half and over time. It's been a great atmosphere here inside the Finn. And 
Boy, I mean, this is what this is why the Big East. I mean, this is why you watch. I mean, this has been a phenomenal game, and the beauty of it, Matt, we still got a buck seventeen to go. And trending toward an almost identical final score as the first one, 67-62, back on January fifth. Also in overtime, where Villanova needed the extra period. But what does this next one seventeen bring? A win for Villanova would mean 12 and 9, 6 and 4 in conference. A win for St. John's would mean 14 and 7. And moving towards 7 and 3, still in second place behind DePaul. Blue Demons right now blowing out Creighton at half. Here we go. Alston's had the hot hand all night. They go inside. KB. That was a travel, and yes it is. Big turnover with only 107 left here in the OT. She just got lost out there, Matt. I mean, she didn't have anywhere to go with the ball, tried to kind of throw it up at the end, and again, Villanova clamps down on the defensive end. That's a huge turnover. Uh, you might not need to foul yet if you're St. John's, but it has to be in the conversation at least. Gadeka milking half this shot clock inside of 15. And Harry Peretta spends a timeout with 10 to shoot. I like it, I really do. I think that's a great timeout by Coach Peretta. You leave yourself 10 seconds to try to get a basket that could maybe put this game to bed. And you use some clock there to kind of see what St. John's is gonna give you there. And now you get a second opportunity to look at it. And Again, you know, you have two options here. Do you want to give Gadeka another chance? I mean, Segris has made the biggest of the shots, especially at the end of the regulation period. Or, you know, hey, Cameron Ock gets the hot hand from three the last couple possessions. But I'll say this, I mean, Gadeka down low feels like the right move here to try to kind of make this a two possession uh, extended game here. And you got time here to give her an opportunity to go one on one, maybe down low and maybe try to get a good look at a two point basket. but. I mean, the way Maddie Segris has been playing, I mean, 21 points, I wouldn't be shocked if you give her the, the, the chance to make the decision here as well. Let's see what they do. Herlihy and Onken. James Gadeka and Segris, five to shoot. James leaning in and hit the side. And that's, a, again, a tough play out of the timeout. Alston to make this a two-point game. Well, that all stems from a poor out of bounds play by Villanova, it wasn't well executed. James held onto it too long, Matt. I mean, that's the bottom line. Didn't go into the play quick enough and found herself in a tough position underneath the basket, had no shot at making that. And Alston in transition, I mean, as good as anybody in this conference, quickly makes it a two point game. And now it's gonna become a free throw shooting contest and that is gonna be a lottery here down the stretch. And Mary Gadeka with a couple of misses. Nova as a team, two of two in this fourth quarter, 10 of 16 on the game for just under 63%. St. John's hasn't been much better. Johnny's have actually been worse at 53. And Kadeka keeping the possibility of maybe a second overtime still alive. One more to try and make this a three point game. There we go. And a timeout for Harry Peretta. Now, and they're winding him down. That was Villanova's last one. St. John's still with one remaining. Still a lot of time. I mean, St. John's could easily get a two here and feel good about that and then try to maybe get a steal or foul on the next inbounds play. I mean. The way the guards have been playing for St. John's, I mean, you could pick your poison here. I mean, you could go with Q, maybe try to get her on a bit of a, uh, have her go one-on-one, -on -one, and maybe you could just get it right into Alston and maybe make her make the decision on the perimeter as to whether she wants to drive or maybe try to fa find a big player down low, try to find an easy bucket. But whatever St. John's does here, they have to do it quickly to try to use as little, as ma little amount of clock as possible here. KB's had a couple of chances as well. She has 13 and 12 today for St. John's as well. So the good news for St. John's, you got plenty of options. You got a couple of different players you could go to here. 
maybe bring a curl around for KB and then try to find Q or one of those kind of things. But Alston will inbound. I think you try to go for a two here. You still got time on the clock to either foul or try to go for a steal after a made bucket. Their ball movement has been much better since the start of the second half. See if they can free somebody up. Maybe Alston might be going just for a quick two. And, well, Villanova still with one more to give after this. That's an interesting choice. So third team foul on the Wildcats. And it goes on Cameron Onken. But now you can stack it up, maybe chance to free somebody up on the perimeter. They go to Hoppy. Off the cross. And left her in the tracks right around Karanchi. One point game with 17.2 to go. Holy smokes. I mean, put her on skates. Right out of Rucker Park to the 10 for two. And a big time bucket there from, from Hoppy. Haven't seen a lot from her again in, in regulation, but in the end, in the fourth quarter in overtime, big time players step up in big games. And that is what she's doing down the stretch for St. John's. And now, Matt, you know, you didn't take it, you took some time off the clock, took nine seconds off the clock, but there's enough time here where you could, if you want to play with a couple seconds here, try to get a steal. If not, you foul. If it gets to about 15 seconds, I think you probably would foul here if you're St. John's trying to extend the game. But also, the thing you have in your hip pocket if you're Coach Joe Tardamel, Villanova's missed some free throws in this game. You can't, you can't bank on that. You want to try to get a steal and get a bucket. But, you know, if you have that in your hip pocket, you can pick your free throw sure you want to send to the line. And if she gets the ball, you foul her immediately and try to play with your couple of seconds that you might take off or give yourself a chance. Regardless, it's going to be one possession game when St. John's gets the ball back. Final 15 seconds, they'll go right into Segrist. Interestingly enough, first time these two met, Villanova only seven total free throw attempts. Almost triple the number tonight, but the results have been very similar. This has not been a good team from the line. Eighth out of 10 in the Big East, but Segrist says take that. And this is the big one, Matt. You don't want to leave it up to just St. John's being able to get to the bucket here to tie the game. This is a big free throw. One of two, and a chance to tie. Maybe send this into double OT. Hoppy with eight seconds left. Going to the 10 for the tie. Three seconds. KB got it deflected out with 1.7 left. Joe Tartamella says, hey, settle down, still enough time. Whatever Tiana England does here, Matt, get as close to the basket as you can. Looking for cross pick action. Hoppy for the win. No good. And Villanova to open up the second half of conference play has swept the season series over St. John's, again needing overtime, and again needing a more than 60 point effort. As Harry Peretta and his kids now go to 12 and nine, six and four in conference play. What a night, Big East women's basketball presented by SoFi. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Uh, 
Well, only the second overtime game in the conference so far this year in terms of conference play, and Villanova once again needing the extra period to beat St. John's 66-64 here on Big East Digital, presented by SoFi. Matt Martucci and the winning coach, Harry Peretta. How are you? What a night, coach. What, 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 first off, let's start with the fight that your kids showed. Uh, it was a, a second half mostly controlled by St. John's, yeah. but you're able to battle back. You get it to the OT, and you find a way to win. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing that a lot this year. I mean, I got to give my kids a lot of credit. I mean, they're tired. They're exhausted. They, we don't have many subs. Uh, but tonight, the game, look, Maddie and Mary, basically won the game, but the game was won on Raven James making a three, Cameron Onkin making a three. So, you know, that's what we need. We need some of our other kids to step up and make a basket here and there, and they did tonight, especially Raven started off in the overtime with the first three, and Cameron hits the three. Yeah, it's a great play here, and then Maddie ties it on this, but the overtime, we, get, we were able to get up three and have a cushion at least. So we're just trying to hang in there the best we can and try to do the best we can. I don't know anything else to say. You told me you were surprised the first time that, that you were able to beat the St. John's. What is it about them that, that just makes this such a tough matchup we, for you? We can't guard them in a man-to-man. -man. We, we just can't guard them. They're too fast for us. We have to play zone. And when you play zone, you're, you're I, I, I don't know. I, I don't believe in playing zone just because you're going to give up some kind of shot to the other team. You know what I mean? In a man, you kind of prevent them from shooting the ball. But we have to play them zone. And you saw in the second half, they started picking it apart. Then we went to the man a couple a couple of possessions, then back to zone, and we went man on the last play. But that's the biggest problem. We have trouble guarding them in a the man. That's the biggest problem. Well, I know you never wanted to make it about you, but I'm going to make it about you for a second. What's this mean in your last go-round to be able to start the, the second half of Big East play with a win like this? Like I said before, I, I thought it was a miracle we won the first time. This game was a miracle, too. We're down two. We tie it. We go into overtime. It's just, I don't know what to say. I'm just really excited about it. I'm, I'm more excited for the kids than I am for me. I've been through this, unfortunately, before. I wish I was, haven't gone through this before, but I've gone through it, and I'm just trying to enjoy it as much as I can. I'm just happy for this group of kids. Well, you get a little less than 24 yeah, hours to go, to go enjoy it. 48, not even yet. Yeah. I have to, you know, tomorrow we're having practice at 8.30 in the yep. morning. Yes. I mean, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not even 48. Right. We're not even going to run tomorrow. We're just going to walk through stuff. and maybe say a rosary or something for Sunday's game. Well, appreciate you stopping Thanks. by. Congratulations. The winning coach, Harry Peretta, his Villanova team battling back, tying the game, and then taking care of business with the big overtime. For my broadcast partner, Sean St. Jock, as well as our producer, Sam Rubinoff, and our entire fine Big East Digital crew, Matt Martucci saying so long, Villanova 66, St. John 64. Might we meet a third time in the Big East tournament? We'll see. This has been Big East Women's Basketball, presented by SoFi. Good night from the main line.